Get connected with Take Two Radio on Facebook or Twitter at Take Two Radio. For email updates on future shows, follow at Blog Talk Radio. For previous episodes, upcoming guests, and more, visit Take2Radio.com. Huh. It's the Mallard. Oh. The Mallard Report. Hey. It's the Mallard Report. The opinions expressed on the Mallard Report are those of the host and participants and are not intended to and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of any simulcasting radio network or sponsors. All listeners are advised to make their own decisions. And now your host, Jim Mallard. Here we go. John, welcome to the Mallard Report. John Weiss is an ordinary man who had extraordinary experiences that changed his life. One night during deep meditation, he accidentally entered the afterlife. His beliefs were changed. To learn more about John and his experiences, visit theafterlifeblog.com. And John will be coming up, I think it's in two weeks. I don't think we've ever set a final date. But I, I, I'm fascinated. It'll be the second time he's been on the program about all this experience stuff. But... But that's not tonight. Tonight, I've got Patrick Patrick Scott Sporer on the program. How are you doing tonight, Patrick? I'm doing well, Jim. Thank you so much for having me. So, I've been, I've been reviewing your website and all this other stuff. Let's, let's talk about you for a second. Give me an overview of who you are, and then we'll get into why you're here. Well, I mean, you know, I've wore many hats in life. I, I was... Uh... I went to college and was on a wrestling scholarship. When I got out of college, I decided to join the Army, and I spent time there. Then when I got out of the Army, I opened up a bodybuilding gym. Don't ask me why, but I did. And was a competitive bodybuilder for many years and promoted the sport and and promoted uh, bodybuilding events and entertainment events and all sorts of things. But along the way, ever since I was a child, I've always had these uh, what I call, for lack of a better term, uh, predictive dreams or precognitive dreams. Um, and it all kind of started after when I was around four or five years old after an accident that I had where I fell on, uh, was playing a game with some kids and I uh, had a head and neck injury. And it seemed not long after that is when all of these, uh, and now I'm not saying that's what did it, but it seems to coincide with that time in my life when I started having these very vivid dreams and as a child, of course, I wasn't aware that it was only me that did that. I thought it was everybody did these kind of things. And uh, basically, as I grew into an adult, I started realizing it was it was a, a really different experience. And you had to be very careful who you shared all that information with. Uh, but nowadays, there seems like there's, you know, it's wide open. People are very open and receptive to uh, this type of experience. And... I keep working on it every day now that I'm retired from all those other things that I used to do. And basically for the last almost nine years now, I've had this blog called the dream cognition experiment where um, each morning I get up and I post these new dreams. And some of these dreams are connected to major news stories. And some of them are connected to the Florida lottery because I live in Florida and there's been some pretty, pretty significant results. And, uh, I always invite everybody that seeing is believing. The thing is, I'm a lot like you. I've heard you talk on your show that I like physical evidence. I want things to back up what I do and not leave it open-ended. And people can go to this Dream Cognition Experiment blog anytime. It's absolutely free. I, I don't do it for money. It, it started out more as a hobby, and it's turned into something full-time. And uh, we can go from there. Yeah, I was going to say, you sent me a, a couple, more than a couple, five or six different actual post and I've seen the website and I'm just amazed by I, how do I say this nicely the volume of posts and mm -hmm. the the consistency and that's what caught my eye honest you know because I get a bunch of people coming to me and saying they want to be on the show and I'm I you know click a bunch of websites up and sometimes you go man that I wish there was more here and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm don't take this the wrong way but man I, I looked at your site and said man I kind of wish there was less here <laughs> Because <laughs> it was overwhelming the first time I seen it. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. 
So yeah, I'm I'm rather prolific, uh, but it's a discipline like everything I've done in my life as an athlete. I just apply the same discipline to this. And, uh, it, you know, like I said, it's an experiment. I'm learning something new all the time. I don't really consider myself an expert uh, because I, I don't have anything totally figured out yet. This is why I continue with the experiment to share it so that when I talk to people like yourself, you may give me new ideas or, or, or a twist on something I haven't thought about. So let's go back to 2011 when you decided to start the blog. What was that well, moment like? Well, it was actually the blog started in 2007. Okay. The, the uh, what you're reading there is the Lotto Dream oh. Connection. Wasn't okay. Let's, let's go back to 2007 then. Yeah. Before. We... Well, what happened is uh, I, I had a friend in L.A. who said, you know, he said, I know you really want to share this with people. I know you want to prove it. He said, so why don't you start a blog? And he said, start just posting these things and see what happens. So that's basically what happened. When I started, you know, I knew I was already getting results because I had, uh, you know, again, what, you, what what I've sent to you, and, and as you just stressed, this is just a snapshot of what of, of what I've experienced through, you know, the last nine years. And you can understand that. You've been on your show like five years, correct? Yeah, five years, yep. Yeah, yeah. so it, you, you know the discipline it takes and you know the passion you have to have to maintain that. But the main thing you mentioned is that it's a daily, you know, I update it. I keep, I keep it fresh so that it's not something you go back and, you know, people, you know, made a prediction, you know, five or six years ago. Most of my stuff manifests within three months to a year the most. There's some that extend a little longer. The louder results come a lot faster. But um, it, was, it, was, it was at first a little trepidation because you're not sure how people are going to respond to this. But I've developed a pretty good uh, global following. You know, it's not like, Millions and millions of people, I would say it's more in the thousands, and on any given day there's thousands of people from all over the world looking at it, and there's some days it's only hundreds of people looking at it. But you never know how many how many of those people are sharing those with other people. Yeah, and that's the thing. As long as there, people are continuing to come is what I always find the comfort. Because mm-hmm. some days, like you said, the days there's hundreds, you go, oh. mm-hmm. But the days, yeah. you know, at least there's still hundreds. And, and the next day when you go, oh, they're back, or there's more than there was two days ago. So you go, oh, okay, it's on this path. I know mm-hmm. I get lost in the micro numbers. You know, today there was yeah. 100 and some odd downloads, and yesterday there was 102. So today today was one. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, the uh, the thing, it's like I, I joke with somebody. I, I send out an update on, on who, how many countries and how many people are looking at it to a few friends of mine, but then I make the big joke, hey, there's cat bit videos and baby videos and puppy videos that draw 15 million views within hours. <laughs> it, you know, when you think about how those go viral, and they're really is really insignificant, but for some people, for some reason, people love those things. I, I get into that with my wife all the time. She'll show me a video of somebody eating something stupid, mm-hmm. or, you know, even eating like a cheeseburger from McDonald's, and they have 300,000 views, and I go... I just sit there, and I, I, you know, I don't understand why, you know, because I'm putting out a solid product that is actually worthwhile to people. I mean, we've all ate, not all of us, a majority of us have eaten cheeseburgers. We all know what they look like. We all have seen people eat them. I don't understand why you want to watch somebody on the Internet do it, but I <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I agree with you. I, it's, it's, it, it, it is phenomenal what, what, how many uh, hits some of these, these uh, crazy videos do get. But, you know, when you go back to, have you ever had dreams that you've had anything precognitive that you've had happening? Well, you know, it's uh, funny you mention that because uh, probably a couple months ago on the show, I mentioned a dream that I had that I don't was has been turned out part to be reality and part the other part hasn't come true yet. Mm-hmm. Which the second part, it was so vivid and so real, it kind of scares me because it was, involves a plane not crashing, which is what you'd think I'm going to head for. But I guess it kind of is because it kind of just like sat down on top of a building. Which was mm. strange to me, like it, like you know, like a kid's toy. Like you got a, a big tall skyscraper, and the kid just sat it down on top of it. And it didn't break uh, apart, or anything. it just was weird. How long ago was that? Uh, probably four months ago. Hmm. Well, you know, there was a story. I don't know if you see. This is the thing. I I have to stay on top of the news. I have to stay on top of current events every day. But there was a story about a plane that landed on a building. A news story. Yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. If you if you look back, you'll see. And probably this is again. I you know, 
I like to stress to people, I'm not the only one experiencing this. I may be experiencing it with a little higher frequency than most people, but my message to people is that we're all intuitive and we all have these things. And what, again, what I try to do with the blog is share this information with people so that they might, if, if they're not sure or they're having dreams, they'll think, well, you know, let me look at it this way. Maybe it is a predictive dream. Maybe it's not all symbolic and psychological and all things uh, I, I haven't found that with mine, although I have lots of people say, uh, well, you know, maybe you need to look at this in a different way. The, tru- the, tru- the truth is, Jim, you know, when I, when I get up in the morning, I'm so excited with these fresh dreams. And I have to, uh, I make a concerted effort to make sure they're posted before the midday Florida drop time. Because a lot of these dreams that are connected to celebrities and people I know and dead people as well will produce lotto results within hours. I mean, I've seen it happen you know, not not a few times. I'm talking hundreds of times. And that is a that, you know, when you can predict lotto numbers and I think I think, you know, the value of the measure of precognitive ability when that is a consistent thing that happens. It's pretty hard to deny that kind of physical evidence. So to play the the jerk card at this moment. So why are you sharing this with people and just not raking in the money and just laughing at everybody? Well, I, I, you know, again, I'm in a place in my life where I can do this. I'm not saying that it might not turn into a mind-making opportunity. Now, after I discovered the lotto, the dream lotto connection in 2011, what I did is I tested the water because, you know, it's like anything else when you make this discovery. And I discovered it by accident because what I did one day, I was contemplating. And I was thinking to myself, some of these, some of these dreams are not manifesting. You know, something's not right here. So I had a dream about, of all people, George Clooney, and I said, I'm going to use his dream as an experiment because it was a real vivid dream. And, and it had a connection to his film, The Descendants, that he was making it at the time in Hawaii. So I said, well, you know, George Clooney, let's look at his birthday. So I looked at his birthday, and his birthday was May 6th or 506. And I said, let me just go to the Florida Lotto site and see if those digits have come in recently. And sure enough, those three digits had come in. It coincided with the dream. And I said, oh, well, let, this is an experiment. Let me write this down and let me see if this happens to somebody else. And then I started tracing back more of the celebrity dreams and people that I knew and people that have died. And I started seeing a pattern. And then I've made all these different discoveries, Jim, that we will not have time to talk about tonight, but maybe another show, uh, of the connections to these numbers that I've I've made this fascinating discovery. So, what I started doing is I set up a budget because I, I was a businessman and I ran it like a business. And I said, I'm going to take uh, you know, money that I can afford, what I call gambling money, not money that I would need to live on or anything like that, because I'm not by nature a, a Vegas type gambler. And you're probably not either, right? No, no. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I wish I had the extra money to be that kind of that gambler. Yeah, but. but you're not somebody to throw money away, in other words. Yeah, and... Uh, the, it's funny because I was watching the Morgan Spurlock um, on gambling on, on CNN last night, and they, they had a segment on gambling addictions. pretty fascinating. But anyway, um, and it had to do with the lotto. But the, it, but so anyway, so when I started seeing this pattern form, I started saying, you know, I'm going to take this budget and I'm going to play this amount of money. And what started happening is I started winning right from the beginning, uh, but I had to be consistent, and I had to. It, it, it became it became a, a, a lot of work to do it, and I did profit from it. And my I have all the tax returns. My my the two accounts that I had, one was a former IRS agent. He was just amazed by it. And then the new accountant I had also said the same thing. But once the experiment ended, which I, I did it for four years. And um, I profited from it, and I decided I'm just going to stop doing it now. So now I use it strictly for, uh, you might say, to tweak, you know, my my uh, spidey sense. Every once in a while, I'll still maybe play a little bit here or there just to see. And just in the last couple of weeks, I've won again. Not big money, but just small amounts. Just let me know that, yes, this is still working. And it's fascinating. But remember, I only focus on the Florida Lotto because I live here. And, and the strange thing is almost like... The machine, the lotto machine, is mind melding with my dream state in some way, but the subconscious is providing it in this very unique way by providing um, an image of an actor or someone I know, or and it doesn't matter if the actor is alive or dead. Now, in some cases, Jim, as you might have noticed if you looked at 
it looked at some of these. I can have a dream about a celebrity, and it won't. I'll get to, I'll get two things out of it. There'll be lotto results, and then there'll be a significant news story. And I'm not talking about run of the mill news stories. And I think you have one there about Harrison Ford. Did, did you get that one? Yeah, I got that one. Yeah. Do you want to read that? No, go ahead. You can go ahead. I I don't have it in front of me. I did read it though. Oh, morning. okay. Yeah. Well, well, then then you're aware that yeah. that was a pretty detailed dream, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, and that uh, well, actually, yeah, and when that when that happened, there were so many people that that so many hits on the blog on that, and just people were floored by the detail of it, and that it was it was posted way in advance. Uh, and that that's just again that's a sample. Oh, you got the Blue Angels one as well, right? Yes, which blew me away because I don't know that 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 one seemed more recent. I mean, it seemed fresh in my mind because I was just reading a story about that before I opened my email. So I guess that's probably the why it drew me more than the other ones did. Yeah, and you get, well the Harrison Ford one took a little longer than than some, but the Blue Angels one took like only a few months from the time of the post. Uh, so and then the Calabasas Fire. Did you read that one? I skimmed that one because after the Blue Angels one, I'll be honest with you, it was kind of like, yeah, okay, <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's yeah, but that was interesting too. Well, you, the reason, the reason, the reason I, I I gave you a sample of a few things because the Calabasas Fire only took like a, less than a month for that Calabasas, California. That was a specific location that came through a dream. That mere, I didn't see. I wasn't shown Calabasas, California. In the dream, it was stated to me a couple of times, and I remember it was just as clear as a bell. I didn't see who was telling me about it in the dream, but I got up immediately and wrote it down. And I said, "Well, I'll make a post on that because that's just something so highly unusual." And then you then you had the wildfire this past weekend in Calabasas, California. I mean, that, that's just crazy. So, wait, wait, let's rewind for a minute because that is crazy. But let's get back into the nuts and bolts of the process. Mm-hmm. So you, you go to sleep, you wake up. Do you immediately turn and start writing, or how to? Okay, well, let's let's define how the dream process works for me. That's a good question. The, you know, if you if I went for for me, the dream process works like this. I'm shown like a miniature movie. Think of yourself going to the movie theater, right? You go to the movie theater. Do you go to the movies? Well, not often because they're so expensive, but I have. You know, I, yeah, but I mean, there was a time yeah. you did. I'm like yeah. you. I, I stay at home and I don't. I rarely go to the theater anymore. But when when you did go to the theater, what happens before the movie? The previews, the uh, exactly. trailers. Exactly. That's how the dreams are. They come to me in these fragmented type trailers, and it piques my interest. Sometimes they're exaggerated and dramatic to get my attention on the subject or the individuals in the dream. So they're like I call them. I call it previews of of coming events. That's how the dreams are. Previews of future events. And then what I had to learn to do, and this has been a lot of trial and error. This isn't something that just you know I I jumped right and figured all this stuff out. It's taken time to learn to go in there and you have to reverse engineer the the uh, the dream itself. And so in other words, there might be a dream where there's a certain actor in the sequence of the dream, like the recent Ben Affleck and Jennifer Gardner dream I just had with an, with an obscure actor named Carl Lumley. Now, I know uh, Carl Lumley just had a, a lotto hit tonight. That, I only had, posted that dream two days ago, and then the numbers came in from his dream tonight. Now, that was a four-digit number, by the way, play four, which pays pretty good money. I didn't play it, but what I'm saying is that it, it came in only two days after the dream. Now, what will happen, Jim, is... The other people that were in that dream suite sequence, Jennifer Garner and Ben Affleck, that's a trigger that something from their birthdays or something pertaining to them in the news is probably going to hit soon. So, again, it's, again, it's, like, it's like a jigsaw puzzle or a hologram even. You, there's bits and pieces you've got to take out, and then I have to decide. I have to kind of intuit how is this going to work, how, how is this piece of the puzzle going to work. And that, Does that make sense? It does to me. Because I, I have experienced these kind of things where during like during invest, paranormal investigating when I used there would be a piece of the case that made sense to that case and then we'd go a year and we'd come back to somebody else's home and that piece fit in with either some like a homeowner some you know, sometimes it was it was strange because there was like a homeowner that owned the one house and then we're back and sure enough we find out that 
that same part and just like you sat there and went of all the houses and all you know the hundred miles that we've been between these two cases how is that how are we following this one person sure you know so yeah <laughs> as strange yeah, as it I, may I, seem to a normal person it's it's mm-hmm. reality that and the hard part is sometimes you're talking about puzzle pieces you get all these pieces and you start trying to put them together and you don't know what the picture is Exactly. Exactly. And it, but then then so you know, but you know, as I go, I'm learning more and more. And I I, I mean, you know, the the other thing is this doesn't only happen when I'm asleep. I have these things happen when I take naps or I go into what I call these little trance uh, daydream visions. Even I'll have these these things happen and I'll jot them down. And sure enough, they'll they'll turn into something. Did you get the? Uh, I can't remember if I sent you. Did I send you a video? called 944 no i didn't see any videos uh, okay uh, it was a youtube video and i've shared it with a few people i made it in 2008 because what happened and you'll you'll find this interesting um the girl i was dating at the time her name was donna we were living in this house together and uh the we had a voicemail set up that was like an answering machine and this happened in august 2008 and it led to a lotto win that's why i'm telling the story and it shows you how this stuff happens outside of the dream world while I'm awake, not not just asleep. This was a re, a real situation. The uh, so I hear the I hear the phone ring and then a vo- I wait to uh, hear a voice to see who it is before I pick it up, and it's uh, an appointment for her at a doctor. And the voice comes on, and it says, "This is a message for Donna. Her doctor's appointment is at 9:44." Now, Jim, <laughs> how many how many how many appointments? How odd is that, right? That I've never had one at nine forty-four. I don't think anybody else has had one either that I've ever talked to. And but that's all recorded, and that's why I put it on that YouTube video because I wanted people to hear it because I know from experience I said, but that's a message for me. And I said, uh, I said that those lotto numbers are going to come in. They came in the next day, the next day, Jim. So and I. I Mm-hmm. I'm going to twist your mind here for a second. As you're as you're talking and I'm looking at the chat and other things, I wrote I write down notes of things that they're, they want me to ask and etc. But they didn't mention this, but I wrote down the I wrote down the single word numbers mm-hmm. before you started to mention 944 because I was going to ask you the numbers stand out to you other ways. And apparently, you've already answered my question. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, I, absolutely. I tell you, if I can, if I can get, uh, uh, I have a friend named George who wants to film all this stuff, but I, you know, I just told him it was going to be, re- it would take a lot of time away from his life to, to have to follow me around. Uh, he tried a couple of times and he saw how difficult it was. And he has all audio and visual equipment. He found this fascinating and he studied this stuff for years and, and he's a very good friend of mine. But the, the thing is, is that it is it is hard to capture on camera because some of the stuff happens but i did catch that one it's it's a really if you ever want me to send it to you i'll, I'll I, I thought i sent that to you but anyway it's uh if if you watch it i give you i mean it's very short it, it maybe lasts 2 or 3 minutes but you can hear the voice uh from the from the answering machine it specifically says that time and then i show you the winning ticket and i show you all the proof i show all the physical evidence the dates times and everything else so nobody could say hey he he hoaxed that now it wasn't huge money. I won two hundred and fifty dollars on that for fifty cent play. But the thing is, I, I did it as proof. I said, okay, I know because I could feel it in my solar plexus. When I heard that number, I said, that's too odd. I have got to play that. And it came in the very next day. As uh, you know, it, it, it's it's just a fascinating thing. Now that's not a once a thing. Here's what happened this. Here's what happened yesterday morning. And I'm glad we talked about this. I'm glad you brought that up about numbers because yesterday morning. The phone, my cell phone rang at 9.50 a.m. And I, well, I don't have a ringer on, so I saw it flash because I don't like to be woke up from a dream because of a phone ringing. So I looked at it, and guess what? Guess the number on it was 409. Those three digits came in on the Florida Lotto last Those exact three digits. Is that not freaky? That is, that's... See, I, I, you know, I've heard, I've talked to people about numerology, which you know, you mm-hmm. start adding numbers and all that stuff. But I, I, I'm of the belief that you are the numbers. Are the numbers you're supposed to be seeing? You're not supposed to be. How do I say this nicely? Tinkering with the numbers, just take them for what they're worth, and that's yeah. Oh yeah. 
I, yeah, I keep, hey, look, I keep it simple. I, <laughs> I've had lots of people that send me oh, it this or it means that, and I found in my, my experience it doesn't mean any of those things. Uh, you know, and again, this is, remember, just like you have your experiences in your life, I have mine. And, and this whole thing with dreams, what I try to explain to people is that, look, the symbols that your subconscious will dredge up or conjure up are not going to mean the same thing to you that they may mean to me, me personally. So I've, I've developed a whole, uh, you know, encyclopedia for myself, a miniature encyclopedia on what my symbols mean for me. And, and this is why I encourage people to write their dreams down in the morning. Now, you asked a question a moment ago, how, the, how this works. Uh, Jim, I'll get up several times a night and jot dreams down. In other words, I can make myself wake up and I'll write down that dream at that specific moment. Then I'll go back to sleep and some, many times that dream will start repeating or there'll be a whole new dream sequence to write. And I'll dream from the time I doze off till the time I wake up. It, it's just nonstop. And there's just many days where I'm overwhelmed. I can't get them all. I have like five, six, seven pages right now of dreams that I don't know that I'm going to be able to get to post. And, and I, the reason I make the list is because I can still mark them off for myself personally. But what I do try to do is I try to put the ones on there that I feel will have the most significant impact to the audience. So how average, I guess, ballpark, I'm, I don't want you to do some scary math for me here, but how many dreams a day are we talking? Uh, well, you know, it can be anywhere from... Well, I do what I've developed. I had to develop a shorthand and my own sort of, uh, you know, acronym type things because I was having to write out three and four pages usually a night. That's a lot in longhand. So now I've got it down to where I can make little notations and little notes. And, I, and I, I'm also a certified hypnotist, so I, I can do a little self hypnosis and, and have recalled helps me with my memory. Now I, it's just like today. Uh, I was. Uh, cleaning up around my house and suddenly a vision of one of the dreams that I had last night came to my mind. It was about a friend of mine who's, who's a former telephone lineman named Ken. And I said, Oh wow. I, I, and it came back so clear in my head and I went and jotted that down and I posted it this afternoon. But uh, yeah, so th this stuff is, this stuff is, like I said, Jim, it's, it's, it's like your, it's like your numbers on your, on your, on your website. It's 24, seven, 24, seven. In fact, I'm, I'm looking for those three digits to hit. I, I've said, uh, I, they're they're due, and this is the other thing I want to tell you about the Florida Lotto. By the way, uh, what I made a discovery is that numbers that hit a year ago in the same month have a tendency to hit in the same month of the new year. And the three digits that that make up your your website, the uh, twenty four seven that you have here, twenty four seven dot net hit last June. So now I'm jotting that down. And, and, and I've been making notes on numbers and everything we're talking about because I've discovered in uh, in conversation that the exchange of conversation is beyond just the simple stuff we're talking about. There's another whole subjective information that's coming to us just through general conversation. So I've, I'm jotting down 102 because you mentioned that. For instance, I jotted down 506 because I mentioned I jotted down 944. Now I'm jotting 247 down. And I'll just see as an experiment, and I'll say, what I'll do is, because you, this is archived, right, this yes. show? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I'll be able to tell people on my blog, hey, go to Jim Mallard's site. You'll see these things were mentioned on the air, and now they're manifesting. So we'll see what happens with that. And for the record, June 7th, uh, 2016, at, uh, we'll say 930, because it's close enough. Um, right. So for all that. I guess I guess my next question. This now I'm going to take you down the other end of the spectrum. When was the last time you didn't have a dream? You know, I I really <laughs> don't I don't know. <laughs> uh, it, it is uh, you know it's just routine. It's just routine. The uh, I can't remember the last time I haven't actually recalled a dream. I, I can't. I was gonna say because you started you started blogging about this stuff in 2007, so we're talking almost. Well, that'd be almost well nine years, almost ten. Yeah. Well, it'll be nine years at the end of August. So that's quite that's quite a stretch. That's that's impressive. Yeah. Well, I, I t you know here's the interesting thing. I was talking to we mentioned uh, Jim Guerrero of Space Boy a moment ago, and I was telling them about um, 
a, 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 sto- a, a research project that was about blogging and podcasting and websites. That the average the average blogger lasts six months, the average podcast lasts a year, and the average website goes down anywhere from six months to a year because people just can't maintain them, or they have uh, they lose their passion, or they had a misconception of what they thought. Because you know, Jim, I think you realize like I do. When I started out doing this, I had maybe two or three people a day that were looking at the the blog. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, and then it just gradually has built, and 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 still the numbers to me. They're okay. Uh, Again, I I would never monetize it. You know, you have to have a lot, a lot of people to monetize something like that to make money on. But that wasn't the reason I started to begin with. It's just it's just part of sharing and seeing what other people think. And and I'll tell you, I have to tell you, in nine years, I've been fortunate. I haven't received any negative feedback. And hopefully, nobody will do it as a joke after the show tonight. I was gonna say I have some (laughs) listeners that just might just just be aware. (laughs) I hope I I hope they don't. I hope. I don't think they will, but just in case, they probably heard it here and just had to give yeah. you a hard time. Because yeah. there's a couple in my in my chat room that will just type up stuff random moments when the conversation gets a little heavy, just to see if I'll laugh on air while the guest is you know right in the middle of this great sentiment, and I'll I'll read something and you know so I as as I say, don't take any of it personally. <laughs> No, no, no. Well, that's okay. I mean, you know, I, I, I have friends on. I have a private list that I send these to, and they send me all kinds of hack jokes all the time on my stuff. They've known me for years. A lot of them trained in my gym, and you know, uh, I used to talk about this. Now you got to remember, I had a hardcore bodybuilding gym, not just a gym. And I mean, I called it Cheers meets Animal House. That's how wild it was back during those days. And I, I, I'd start conversations about this stuff, and you know, you're in a you're in a place where you think people aren't going to be open and receptive, but surprisingly, a lot of people would share their own stories similar to mine, but different ways, you know, different paranormal type of activity from UFOs to ghosts, you know, you name it. It was a very cool gym. It was a very down to earth type of gym. You know, it was a lot of fun. So I, I, this this question comes in here. Uh, what's the difference between this and, and like astral projection or? Any of that other stuff that you're doing? I mean, that's out there. Well, I've had I've had people say, well, I think you're, you know, they always chime in with trying to help me. I I think you're remote viewing. I think you're astral projecting. I think you're doing all these different things, and I'm open and receptive to all that. But you know, it, this isn't uh, as I mentioned earlier. I have studied ooh, well, probably back 35 years all sorts of different things, not not just with dreams, but you know, I've experimented with psychomantiums, and it, I did. Do, I tried some advanced meditation for a while. I've had one regression done in my life, and it, it was pretty interesting. I got it on cassette tape, and some very odd, strange voices came through, and there were 14 people there witnessing when that happened. Uh, you know, so I, I experimented. I tried different things, but usually, this is. I always come back to this, and I just try to keep it simple. I, I, I don't want to try to you know, uh, get too far out on the limb with it because it's working for me. Yeah, as you were sitting there saying that, all I could hear in my head was, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I'm just right, kidding. <laughs> right, absolutely. So the mature, this is kind of a half-cocked question, but I, I'm going to try to ask it. The majority of your dreams are positive in nature and you get the messages from them? or how? Do, is there any well, negative in this at well, all, I guess, is well, my... Well, the thing about negativity and, and positive and negative, I, I, toward it, you know, I tend to lean towards a Zen approach to these things because there, there are people that say, I've noticed that you have you know, these dreams about volcanoes and earthquakes and bad things that happen. And I go, well, but these things have happened throughout history. It's not like I'm creating them. I mean, and, the, and if, let's put it this way. If I'm getting a a preview of a future event of a disaster, wouldn't that be a positive thing if it helped people? And somebody said, hey, you saved my life. I read your blog and, you know, I didn't get on that plane that exploded or I didn't get on, you know, I stayed out of that area and things like that. I remember a friend of mine in L.A. I said, hey, I had a dream that there was an earthquake in L.A. Well, he he knew from experience when I visited him. <laughs> I'll never forget this. This happened, uh, it was around Christmas time, 1999, 98, somewhere in there. As soon as I got off the plane, I said, man, we're going to have an earthquake. I said, I, I could feel it on the way here. And that evening, there was an earthquake. And he he just looked at me because he's, he's, he was skeptical of all this stuff. He's known me for years. 
And but he's actually the one that encouraged me to do the blog because he said, "Look, I've I've been around you. It, you it's just like every time I went to Los Angeles, I I would have these crazy experiences with celebrities that I would just run into, people that I would dream about, and I would tell him, I said, "Hey, I had a dream about you know this guy last night. I end up meeting the guy in the airport when I was on my way out or something like that. It's it, it, it you know it's just it's just it because because of the way these things happen for me, and I you know I, I made a I said something to somebody when I said, I really look forward to sleep. And he goes, hey, you know, I do too. And I go, no, but for me, I go on this other, this other whole journey. I said, as soon as, as, soon as I, I look forward to dozing off, it's like I go on all these trips. You know? Now, the, the trance, these, these trance daydreams or these uh, trance naps, I've been experimenting with Jim lately. And some of them I'll do propped up. And I've noticed the ones when I'm, I'm, prop, I'm propped up and I'm dozing will be more like what... Joe McMonagall talks about in remote viewing. Are you familiar with who he is? No, I'm not. Okay, look him up sometime. He's like he was in the army, you know, the Stargate program. Uh, okay. The remote viewers, yeah, yeah. he'd pu- probably be okay. a great guest for you sometime. But uh, and there's other people that do this out there. But he's like supposedly the king, and you know the way he describes how you see landscapes and everything else. The difference between what I do and remote viewers do: remote viewers don't really predict the future. They uh, they they kind of move through. Um, time or something, uh, and they use uh, you know a geographical like a longitude and a latitude, and then they they can kind of see what's at the target or something like that. It's a little bit different than what I do. So somebody suggested that you just record these instead of writing them. Have you ever thought about doing that? Well, again, I started out recording them. I do want to make. I would love to make a, a daily morning video of these, uh, and and that is a plan. But right now, this is the best I can do with this the situation I'm in. I'm not I'm not like super computer savvy. I'm learning some new things. Uh, I want to learn how to 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 use these things to make it a little more creative. Now, like I said, I started out with a little handheld uh, video camera, doing some YouTube videos, and that one with nine four four, that's a very popular video with a lot of people on YouTube. If anybody wants to go see that, plus plus they can go on the blog and they can look in the archives and they can just. Ta- you know, search nine four four and listen to it. So I, I guess the next question from them. I love these people. They're making my job easy tonight. I love that. Are, mm-hmm. are all dreams messages, or are some just uh, how do I say this? Useless entertainment. Um, not in my experience. I, I have found you know I I you know this may sound like a metaphysical cliche because we hear it in movies and TV shows and they use it, but there really are no coincidences. You know, there's, 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 there's no accident that, that, uh, when these dreams occur. Now, again, there are people that I know that dream, but they'll tell me, I, I remember dreaming, but I can't remember my dreams. And there'll be people that'll tell me they dream this, but the problem is they don't write it down and they don't follow up on it. They just sort of go, Oh, and, 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 and you have to develop a discipline, uh, of doing it. I, I said, look, don't don't try to remember everything. Just remember one word. Just remember one sentence if you can. It somehow will make sense to you. Oh, well, speaking of metaphysical, I better read this promo. Uh, <laughs> have you ever experienced something that you could not just explain with a definitive answer? Go over to Metaphysical Lemonade to clench your first curiosity. Share experiences, ask questions, join them at metaphysicallemonade.org. Almost forgot. Told you I could do this anytime I wanted to, and almost just forgot to do that one. That would have been bad. Um, so my there, next, go there ahead. No, there was no accident, Jim, that I mentioned <laughs> metaphysical. <laughs> if you wanted to have mentioned, I probably would have forgotten, got yelled at later. But that's okay. Stuff happens like that all the time to me. I guess, I guess the next question I'm gonna I'm gonna ask it two different ways, and you can answer it whichever way you want. Mm-hmm. Is there is there something that people do that prevents dreams or is there something that people can do to help promote having dreams well you know i've experimented with a few things i experimented with eating certain foods now remember now remember this has been this is either a genetic thing with me or it was due to the accident i want to stress that again because i've had this ability since i was a kid and it doesn't seem to matter what i did what i ate it didn't care if i ate mcdonald's or burger king or you know or any special type of foods or anything else. And and sometimes I I can't even say that certain medications have bothered me. Now there are people I've heard that take, you know, medication on a regular basis, but it says it causes them nightmares. 
Now, that may be a result of the chemicals, but for me, I can't honestly tell you that I ever have had what I call a nightmare in my life. I've had some scary stuff, but I wouldn't necessarily call it a nightmare because, again, in my experience, and, and I stress my experience because it's not going to be the same for everybody, the the dream weaver, as I call it, or my subconscious, I, I use the term dream weaver on my blog to describe my subconscious uh, as a form of entertainment. But the uh, the thing is, is that it will dramatize or it will exaggerate something to make sure that I pay attention. That does not mean that in reality it's going to happen the same way as the dream. But it gets my attention to know, you know, in other words, it gets my attention and based on my experience, I know what to, how to design it. And I'm sure that, listen, I'm, I, this is an ongoing experiment and I'm still going to learn new things. I learn something new all the time with this. And that's what makes it that's what makes it so much fun and interesting to me because there's no dead end here. It's sort of like, well, you know, I might have hit a, blo- a roadblock. It's like a runner's, you know, when runners hit the wall, they claim, you know, I might have that for a little bit, and then some, suddenly I'll go, oh wow, that was interesting, or, or this. It was just like it was just like a, a few weeks ago, I posted that two things were repeating around me. Now this is, this goes with the coincidence repetition phenomena. This has, this is the stuff that happens during the waking state that sometimes is stimulated by a dream. And what I mean by that, I had to coin that phrase because I haven't seen anything like that. I couldn't discover anything like that. It's when something like a name or a number, as you talked about earlier, will repeat around me with frequency. And then suddenly it seems as the event is getting closer, the frequency of that name or number will pick up. And so, you know, that, again, and there, and there were two things repeating at the same time. One of them was roller coaster and the other one was boomerang. And so suddenly... And here's a strange thing. You'll probably laugh at that. But I was watching this new series. It's called Dice. You know you know who Andrew Dice Clay is, right? I do, yes. Yeah, yeah. And his new show is just was hilarious. It was on Showtime. But one of them I just happened to watch started talking about it had Boomerang in it, and then it had Roller Coaster in it. And I said, you know what? Let me see if there's such a thing as a Boomerang Roller Coaster. Jim, I made that post. And then Six Flags had a boomerang roller coaster that made high-profile news within weeks. What are the odds of that? I don't know. That sounds scary, by the way. I can't imagine what it looks like, but I just, I don't know. Maybe I'm like you and like to stay home and like to stay my feet on the ground, so to speak. I <laughs> Yeah. Well, you got to stay, you, you know, I have to stay grounded with all this stuff. I take breaks, you know, I watch TV, watch movies. I'm watching the NBA finals right now. I actually had a dream about the Golden State Warriors. I posted back in March that they were going to uh, be in the NBA playoffs again and could go on and win another another title. So, and, and uh, here's what happened uh, a week or so ago when they were playing the Thunder. The Thunder were up three to one, and somebody had sent me an email saying, "Well, I guess you were wrong about the Golden State Warriors." <laughs> it, and then suddenly, what happened? Golden State turned around and beat the Thunder, and now they're in the playoffs. So that's kind of freaky because it's almost like these things can't be changed. You know, this, these future events. Same thing with the numbers. It's like I told somebody: it doesn't matter whether I play them or not; those numbers are still going to come in. And what does that prove? It, it, you know, somebody said, "Well, why don't you play it?" I said, "Well, I, I did." But I said, what does it prove? It proves I had the dream. I said, that's that's the whole idea behind this. It proves that I had a precognitive dream. I had a heads-up dream on a consistent basis that this was going to occur. But it just happened in this very strange way. And again, I stress, if people go to the Dream Cognition Experiment blog and start becoming a follower, when I say a follower, I mean watch it like a daily newspaper. Get up in the morning, look at it, and then look at it again at night because these things, these results happen rapidly you'll start understanding the process and you might be able to figure out how you can apply it to your own life. I get, I, I think we've kind of beat around this, but I'm, I'm just curious. Um, you said that it, some, some of them have been day. What's the fastest turnaround that you've seen? Hours. Well, on the water, you mean? Yeah, I guess we'd probably, that'd probably be the easiest oh. one to see a turnaround on. Oh, yeah. I, I've had several just in the last couple of weeks that I made the post at in like nine, well, just the Carmen Electra dream that I posted just a few days ago. Uh, the result was 12 hours later. But that that's one of the long ones. I had another one about a friend of mine. He's a local radio personality. 
I made the post in the morning. Three and a half hours later, the midday play for game was connected to his birth information. And back to the the uh, the non lotto predictions. I don't know how else to phrase it. Yeah. Have Have you ever seen one, or I guess seen one, made one that you were glad didn't come true? Well. That's a that's that's a tough question because so many of them do, but I do say sometimes when I you know um, I think wh- I think a better way to answer that is I've had some where I saw much more destruction or disaster, and it still occurred, but the destruction and disaster wasn't as bad as that I saw in the dream. That might be a better way to answer that. Yeah, like I said, any any better news out of bad news is. Good news. Yeah. Oh, and Jim, thank you. Thank you for making me think about this. You said something a moment ago. I want to. I want to stress to your listeners. I. I have never had a near death experience. I haven't been struck by lightning. I haven't been abducted by aliens. And I'm, those are no joking matters to me. I know people have these things. So what I'm saying is, this dream, this this stuff that has been stimulated in my life, has to be some either genetic or due to that accident because I, I I can't account for any any kind of incident paranormal or otherwise why I can do this. Yeah, I'd imagine there's some connection. I can't put my finger exactly on it, but there's something there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, it may be genetic. Well, have you anybody else in your family have these strange? I mean, consistent dreams i have I, well of course i uh my i have one sister that says she dreams like this and i urge her to write the things down and she'll share them with me from time to time but not with the frequency that i'm doing but again they could be there could be a lot of people out there that are but they're not they're not recording them you see, they're not sharing them or recording them because what happens with people and jim you know this through life people are afraid they're going to get made fun of People are afraid they're going to be wrong, and then they just can't handle being wrong. I've never been afraid. You know, when I went into business, I had no money in the bank, my friend. I remember I remember, I was sitting there thinking to myself, I, I had zero money in the checking account. It opened the doors of this gym, and three days later, my life changed. You know, same thing with the bodybuilding shows. I was told those would never work in my area. And the first show I had, standing room only, there was over 1,000 people in the place. You know, so I've dealt with a lot of adversity and people telling me I can't do this or it won't work and everything else. And and you want to wonder where they where they get their ideas for that. Where do they where do they come across saying, you know, well, they're they, the people that built the website the last six months. Don't worry about. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what I'm saying. I, I've dealt with you know lots of this, and I've never really concerned myself with being right or wrong. The only way you're going to learn is you're going to make mistakes. And even on my blog. Uh, I've I've gone back and looked at and said, and got mad at myself and I said oh man I forgot to add that or I forgot to put that in the summary I still got the subject right but I would have got the I would have pinpointed the uh, the actual event much like the Harrison Ford uh, result uh, so yeah there, there there's a lot of trial and error there's a lot of trial and error just like you did with your show I'm sure there's been a lot of trial and error with that yeah we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> As they say, a lot more error, error. But you know, it it wouldn't be one of those today without all of that baggage that it drags with it. So, mm-hmm. yeah. the um, did you the, you know it's just like the the coincidence repetition phenomena post that I made on on asteroid uh, that happened on a Saturday afternoon. I was watching a movie. I saw an actress, and this is how the synchronicity of this works. And for some reason, I decided to look up the actress's name. And I said, wait a minute, I saw her in a James Bond movie a long time ago. It was called Thunderball. And I said, so I did a history on her. And what it led me to is this movie she made in 1968 called The Green Slime. And the, but but it, I said, oh, wow, The Green Slime. Yeah, that looks interesting. Maybe I can catch that on Turner Classic Movies one night. And But I read the summary, and it was about an asteroid heading towards Earth. And then a couple hours later, I'm channel surfing. You know, I don't look for these things. That's what I'm saying. And suddenly there's something there, <clears throat> excuse me, about an asteroid coming towards Earth. And then there was another one. Well, after I have three, usually three, I make a post because I know something is close. And then a week later, Phoenix, Arizona, all of a sudden the news was about the asteroid that came into the atmosphere and created the sonic boom. They didn't necessarily impact Earth. But you've got to ask yourself, what are the odds that 
that the headline news would call it an asteroid as opposed to a meteor. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the other thing you got to think about. The, the wordplay that goes on within the mainstream media, which could probably be another hour discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and NASA even called it that. But, but that's the interesting thing is that when I'm picking up on these news stories, and it's like you know somebody brought to me they said, well, you, that wasn't exactly what you said. I said, yeah, but look at the headline. Look at the headline. I said that's what you got to think about. What are the odds that I would, I would the CRP was an asteroid as opposed to a meteor, and then major media is calling it an asteroid. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. And 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 you know, look, Jim, you you you're no fool. You. We've been impacted by heavenly bodies. I mean, there's plenty of huge craters all over this planet. But for some reason, I think people get the idea that because we're humanity and we're all here, that these things won't happen again. But they're bound to happen sooner or later. That doesn't mean the world's going to be destroyed. I, I'm not a prophet of doom. I, I don't have dreams where I see the world being wiped out. I do have dreams where there's going to be you know, hurricanes or earthquakes or the common variety you know, type of era. Uh, I was on a show a few weeks ago, and three days later, after I mentioned about a, a, a massive earthquake, the, the earthquake hit in Ecuador. And I just happened to have two posts that coincided that specifically pointed to Ecuador. And I even had the magnitude of the, of the size of the quake that hit there and even even a summary of the damage that took place. Now, what you have to look at is when somebody says, well, earthquakes happen all the time. And my friend in California pointed that out to me. And I said, you're absolutely 100% correct. I'm not a fool. I said, but how many are newsworthy quakes? How many are large quakes that create damage? I said, those are the ones that I'm picking up on. I'm, I said, if I, if I generalized my stuff and I said, oh, earthquake's going to hit today, how ridiculous would that be, right? Yeah, it'd be like saying a car crash. Yeah, be a car yeah, crash. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there has to be... You know, I don't want to even post stuff unless I I feel there's something. And that and and another thing you mentioned, um, you earlier stimulated me. It's rarely that I dream about something that's not going to be big. Uh, when it comes to comes to a, a, a dream and a news story, it's usually going to be some sort of major league thing. It's just like these dreams I have before these before these actors die, you know, or before just like the dream I had about Muhammad Ali, and then now you saw that huge news story. And I had that dream last August, and I specifically put in there that these type of dreams, when they come to me with a still photo, 99.9% .9 of the time, those are a heads up. Same thing happened with the David Bowie dream once before. No, And here's the thing, Jim. No one even knew he was sick when I posted that dream. That Any idea that he was sick enough that he would pass away, and six months before he died, I posted that dream. Uh, so these, these are things, and I've had the same thing happen with people that I know that have ended up dying. That's just, yeah. Okay, so I've got one more lotto question for you. Why haven't you won the Mega Millions or the, the Powerball or whichever? I don't know yeah. what Florida is, but whichever one it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, um, if you watch what I do, I uh, for some reason – the dreams are connected to the cash three and the play four games. I think I'm probably getting the information for like the fantasy five here in Florida, the Powerball, the lotto and the mega millions. I probably am. I just haven't discovered it yet. So that's a great question, by the way. I don't know. Did you pose that or did somebody from your chat pose? I, that? I posed that one. That was oh, me. Yeah, well, finally. <laughs> oh yeah. That's, well, that's a great question because I, I question that myself. Uh, the the thing is, is that I have consistently won with cash three and play four. And by the way, you can do really well with that. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, if you're the thing about the, the big games is that I've done a, a lot of study on the lotto since I've been playing it. And you're going to find that 85 percent of the giant jackpots are won by people who, who went who play quick picks. It's it's rarely won by people who actually choose the numbers. Now, did you see the recent Powerball winner there in New Jersey? No, I they, haven't paid attention to it. They won, they won, it was a family, a uh, single mom with like six or seven kids, and they reported that it was a dream that gave them the numbers, and that's how they won. So why would they say that? I mean, what are they going to gain from saying that I had a dream and I got the numbers as opposed to just saying, hey, I played a quick pick and I won? Why would they? I just I couldn't see them fabricating that. So there are other people that do have dreams that lead to, to money and giant jackpots. So we're at that point where I told you to get to earlier where I want you to self-promote yourself before I rush you off the phone and so I can finish up the show. 
Well, as as far as uh, promoting myself, uh, the the simplest thing I can ask people to do, and and I would appreciate if they would visit the Dream Cognition Experiment blog. You can uh, you may have a link on your website to that, or you can just yeah. The Google chatters it. have been getting it, and it'll be in the the show notes with the podcast later. So yeah, yeah. So and and, and if you start following it, uh, hopefully you'll become a fan of it. And then you can kind of see what other shows uh, I'm going to be on in the future, uh, things of that nature. So that's pretty well simple. I, I don't really have a lot of a, a book to promote or anything like that at this time. Well, I want to thank you for enlightening me on what you do because, like I said, I was overwhelmed the first time. And that that's good because when I'm overwhelmed with information, that means there's information that my listeners will be interested in. So. Having told you that earlier, I just I guess I figured had to clean it up a little bit. So don't 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 change that because of me. Oh, oh I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't figure you were, but you know, just because. Well, I. Well, thank you, Patrick, for all the time this evening and all the information. Hey, Jim, thank you so much for having me as a guest. It's been a pleasure. And whenever you get to the uh, the bold prediction, sure to go. Well, I guess it can't be right because. Whoever you pick for president, I, I just don't want to know, but I guess I do want to know. <laughs> uh, well, if that if I do get a dream about that, which I haven't yet, I, I, I try to, you know, people say, why don't you try to program your dreams? I, it doesn't work. I, I've tried that before, but I have sort of given myself a little self-hypnosis as I'm dozing off, show me who the next president of the United States is going to be. But uh, again, that's something that that'll be great for people to watch to see if that comes up. You never know. Now that we're talking about it, I might have a dream tonight about that. Like I said, lesser of two evils, I get the feel of. But that's, anyways, enough of that. But have a good evening. Thank you, Jim. And thank you. Okay, so there we go. There's your dreams. Or what to think about your dreams. My direct ad links, my direct take from directadlinks.com. Here we go again. It's the time of the night seems this show goes faster and faster each week. I know that's hard for some people to believe, but it does, and I guess the, uh, oh, that one's going to work. Brian, and, Brian Anderson, and Brian knows your voice, voiceover guy, who, extra extraordinaire who's done the intro and outro, put them together for me. This isn't my final take, this is just talking to him. Ask me why it says his name instead of mine, and I fixed it, I think, but I didn't fix it in the intro, apparently. Yeah. I don't know. I fixed them both, but whatever. But Brian does great work, and uh, go check out. Well, his website isn't up yet, or back up, but you can find them hanging around me all the time. So if you have a, a book that you want to do with audiobooks or whatever. Anyways, that isn't my final thought. That's just me rambling about whatever I wanted to ramble about for a minute. My final thought tonight is summer is here. Official, well, not official yet. It doesn't. The season doesn't change until the end of the month, but... Um, I know it's summer, and you people will be out and about. You'll be missing the live show, and you'll be sending me all sorts of apologies, and that's great. I, I'm i happy for you. Live your life, and don't send me messages apologizing for missing the show. Good grief almighty. And cat, get feeling better. That's another reason to miss the show. And if your family's in town, your family's in town. Guess what? The podcast will be there next week. You can get it. It's not that big a deal. I love you all, and I appreciate you all taking time to listen. But... I'd rather have 10 people, and there's more than 10 people listening right now, who are having lives and having things to do than 100 people living in their parents' basements. I've said that on, I think I said that to Bill on his Skywatch last night. And check out Bill's Skywatches, too. Never know who's going to show there, because every once in a while I drop in and uh, fill some time with Bill, and it's fascinating some of the conversations we get into, or I get myself in trouble. But that's here or there. So that's all that fun stuff, I think, and... Um, yeah, like I said, don't apologize for missing the live show. Don't apologize for uh, not not listening every week. That's fine. Uh, tune in when you can, and it'll be here for you. And uh, enjoy it. With that being said, I think I'm going to go right about now. That's it. I've had enough. We're out. If you're looking for a radio show... Well, before we flip that on-air sign to the off position, a quick reminder. For all things about the report, previews and reviews, go to TMR247.com.
Get connected with Take Two Radio on Facebook or Twitter at Take Two Radio. For email updates on future shows, follow at Blog Talk Radio. For previous episodes, upcoming guests, and more, visit TakeTwoRadio.com.